Hello, this is Bruno Pelletier Becker. So we are continuing with uh, Fly Me, and this is our next video about improvisation. So we talked about improvising with the melody or around the melody last time, and uh, today we're talking about improvising from the chords, from the chord changes. So our mission here and we have to accept it, is to acknowledge the chords. So none of that business of noodling around in the C major scale. I mean, this is something I've heard many people do on, on this particular song, actually, because as I've mentioned before, since all the chords are diatonic, some people think they're doing you a favor by telling you that you can improvise up and down uh, your C major scale. Um, it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea because, uh, number one, you're not acknowledging the changes. You know, think about it. If the composer chose all those different chords, you know, throughout the melody, so you're not going to play what sounds like one big old chord. You know, it's, uh, yes, it simplifies the, the thinking, but it's just not going to sound right. You know, you're not going to acknowledge the changes. You know, that's what I keep saying. So if you want to hear the changes, you need to play the chords or enough information about most of the chords. Let's put it this way. Um, so a popular approach is to play a different scale with each chord. There again, it's not such a good idea, at least not at this point, because we're talking a lot of notes to learn through each and every chord. So let's skip that for now. Uh, another approach is to play arpeggios. Now that's a lot better. Arpeggios, we only have four notes per chord, right? The, the four chord tones, so that's a lot better. But what we're going to do first is play what, um, what we call groupings, four note groupings. Now that term I first heard through um, um, a Jerry Bergonzi book. You know, Jerry Bergonzi, the, the saxophone player, has this wonderful series of uh, books on improvisation. And in one of them, he deals exclusively, and I think the whole book is about that, that approach, um, what he calls four-note groupings. Nowadays, I hear people call those um, Coltrane, you know, what do they call them? Coltrane patterns. Coltrane patterns. Um, but um, it's more or less the same thing. So I'm, uh, I'm going to show you the three different forms, and there will be a PDF explaining the, the three different forms, because that's the, uh, the beauty of this approach. Um, we are going to apply a certain pattern, the grouping, um, on every chord, starting from the root of the chord, but depending on the chord quality, of course, we'll choose one pattern over the other. So if the chord is a major seven chord or a dominant chord, even a six chord, if we have you know, some kind of um, you know, chord that has six chords, in other words, any chord that will have a major third in it will play the major form for the grouping. So if I do this from, a, from an A note, the major form is this. So one, two, three, five in terms of uh, um, degree numbers from the scale. If we have a minor chord, so any kind of minor chord, whether it's um, minus seventh, minus sixth, um, we will play the minor form of the grouping, which is this. So the pattern is a little different in this case. It's one, three, which is a minor third, four, and then five. Okay, And if we happen to have a diminished chord or a half diminished chord, then we'll play what is really a, a variation of this minor pattern. We'll just flat the fifth, so it's going to be like that. So it's the same minor pattern but with the flatted fifth. You probably also recognize those uh, shapes as the four, for, uh, the first four notes, I should say, of a pentatonic scale. So. If you think um, like an A minus seven, the minor pentatonic would be this. But our grouping in this case is only the first four notes. Okay? And same with the major. So if I have a, I'm looking at a major. 
major seven chord, the, the major pentatonic, would be this, and our grouping is the first four notes, short of the fifth. Okay, so um, the fingerings are really easy, those patterns, and you can learn them one string at a time. Uh, something I like to do is, uh, is play through a simple song and um, do the, the patterns all starting from the same string. So for instance, if I'm looking at the first few measures of our song, Fly Me to the Moon, first chord is A minor, second chord is D minor, so we use the same pattern, but starting from the D note. Um, the next chord is G7, so I'll use the G major pattern here, still from the sixth string. The next chord is C major, so I'll use the C major pattern starting from the same string. Okay, so you learn everything from the sixth, then you learn everything from the fifth, everything from the fourth string, third string, etc. And then you start really uh, learning, uh, learning where the notes are, for one thing, and then you know hearing the form of your song. So I'm going to play, um, I think I'll play the whole, the whole song the whole form, and um, I'll use those groupings. So I'll play them very slowly, um, and I will play them randomly in terms of, you know, I'll switch strings whenever I feel like it. So let's not say this is the definitive way to do it. You know, you can, like I said, you can do everything from the same string or everything from the bottom two strings. Usually people will learn those notes first, the, the two notes, I mean, the, the notes on the two bottom strings and grad gradually add one string at a time. So, slowly, one, two, three, four. So A minor to D minor, going to G7, and then C. Then we go to F, here's our B half diminished, B, quick A minor, quick A, dominant, that was, um, to do once you are able to play those is be able to hum along. I know that's, I keep insisting on you guys singing when you play, but this is how you really learn to, to um, improvise freely. You want to really hear all this stuff. So play your patterns and then sing along. Party day, baby, so on. So learn the sound of those patterns because then if you hear the chords, you should be able to sing your patterns. And so forth, right? So you want to know what those sound like so that when you start improvising, you tap into it. And you are playing from inside, you know, from within. You're not just plugging in some, some, um, some notes that you, um, you learned. Okay, so the second step, once you know how to play your groupings, once you're familiar with them, we'll, we're gonna experiment a little bit. What we're gonna do here is still think of the grouping. So if I look at the first, the first one again, A minor seven, I'm gonna play by grouping, and then I'll add the seventh of that chord. So in that case, it's gonna be a G note. 
So I'm I'm now playing five notes. Ba do da dui fe. Those are all the notes I'm going to play on this chord. But um, I'm going to resolve into the next chord because uh, with just one note. So my next chord is D minor. Remember, uh, I go from A minor to D minor. Right. So I'm going to do this. Ba do da dui fe. So what happens is the last note of my first measure, the G, goes down a whole step and becomes the third of the D minor. And that's all I'm going to play on the D minor chord. So I'm not going to run a whole pattern on the D minor. What happens is I'm running a pattern every other chord. So we could fool around with the rhythm. It could be a like that. Or so that's now my next chord is G dominant so I'm going to play a G major pattern and the seventh is F and I'm going to go down the half step and land into the third of the C chord which is the chord that comes after that so so far I have this going to G, now I could play those in different places, I could have gone uh, and then my G, I could have played it here, and I'm landing into the, the C chord, you don't have to play the chord, I'm just playing it so that you hear better where we're going, so we just have Two, three, four. Next chord is F, which goes into a, a B minor, seven five five, right? And the chord is next chord is E seven, which goes into A minor, which we then do, needs, needs to move to an A seven. So we have two beats of an A minor seven then it's D minor right now we're going to the G7 and then the next chord is going to be E minor which runs into A7 and then D minor again and then C major okay so that was the first half and we have a really clear understanding of the harmony. At least I think so. You know, if you play if you play this, I mean you completely, totally hear the changes with those simple patterns. same thing for the second half which is virtually the same chords um, by the way there's some variations at the end of the first ending um, what I played you know that I played the simplest thing which is uh, D minor 7 to G7 then E minor 7 to A7 and then it finishes with a D minor 7 to G7 seven to C. What we could have done is this is what the melody goes like that. C major seven, F seven, E minor, and then we're ready for the D minor. Okay. So if you play all those extra chords, then uh, when you play your group, your groupings, you're going to have to acknowledge them as well. So, so D minor to G, and then quick C, 
quick F, quick E minor, quick A7, and D minor, and then G7, and so on, right? So do it both ways, and you'll learn those extra chords. Um, they're very common. People often play those, um, so it's, it, they're good to know, and it's a nice turnaround type chord progression there. Okay, so that's going to be it for today's uh, video. We'll continue next time with some even more interesting patterns. So uh, stay tuned.